I've been wanting to talk to you for quite a while because um, basically we're both in the same field, we're both sort of um, in the same sort of realms, I guess, mm -hmm. and, and what we do, but we come at it from slightly different angles. Um, I guess I'm more sort of scientific, practical looking out, and you're sort of on the interaction, communication, all that sort of thing, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, mediumship and, 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 and the whole psychic um, realm is something that I'm learning about as I go. I find, it, I find it really, really interesting. So it's, um, yeah, I'm learning as I go. So it's always good to talk to people like yourself that um, are right in there and, and you're sort of in the same field as me, but you're from a different angle and just to get your views and opinions on things, you okay. know. And um, that's how we learn, sharing. Yeah, yeah oh, absolutely. That's why I hold on to it, eh? Yeah. Can't take it with you. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. can you give us a quick rundown of just quickly how you got into all this? Just been like it all my life. Something you're born with? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I certainly discovered as I got older it was um, through the family. Um, but yeah, it's just something that happens. It's it's pretty cool. I enjoy it. Um, and was there a sort of moment in your life that something happened that you sort of figured, well, okay, there's something here, there's something going on here? Um, yeah. Gee, was that's a big that's a big question. And, you know, uh, the other day. Um, having all drowned twice when I was younger through accidents that occurred and then a little bit later on um, getting very ill and passing away sort of made me realize that there was more because I saw people that I hadn't seen because they had passed away a long time earlier and hadn't seen for ages and that's how it sort of evolved because I was like that's got to be in my dream state or out of body experience so I wonder how I can get back there. Mm. And so for me, it was able to um, figure out that we are permitted to visit, but we're not permitted to stay. It's not our time to stay. We've got other things to do down here, Mark, you see. Of course. Of course. So what would, what would be your process uh, when you're putting on a show, when you're doing your, doing your work? Um, is there a sort of a process that you go through? Yeah, I usually leave the pub about six o'clock. Uh, <laughs> Get the right frame of mind. No, I'm just pulling. Obviously, I'm just pulling your leg. No. Um, yeah, I just I sort of been preparing all day, pretty much, just running through, um, just my thought process, trying to get clarity within myself. Do a cut of care, obviously open to water, which is open to spirit, uh, creating a safe environment uh, in my mind, and asking for what was meant to happen today happen. You know, um, if I was going to crime scene though, it'd be a totally different genre of questioning or, or kind of care. So that, that makes things a um, bit more in, intense, if that makes sense. You know, you, you're dealing with some pretty serious stuff. And your, your crime work, I mean, is that something that you were asked to do or is it something that you decided that you had an interest in it and you wanted to get involved in it? So you just sort of well, started start, doing it? I was, I was doing it sort of before I started Sensing Murder. Um, I was really interested in crime all my life anyway, um, and mystery. Uh, so, yeah, I was always kind of into it, but I got asked to do Sensing Murder, did that. That was 17 episodes over a long period of time. We, um, finished working for them and then got asked to work in a, on a team over in the States and had been over there coming up 10 years, working um, some pretty freaky places, which you as a paranormal mm -hmm. investigator would have, would absolutely chomp your arm off yeah. to get to. Jealous, yeah. And I'll give you some examples. I guess for me it's uh, going to some really cool places in the States, which I can't disclose because I'm on a non-disclosure order. Um, what do they call it, DNA? Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's fine. It's pretty exciting, but back home in New Zealand, still working in the crime scene. As you can see, I've, I've got a little thing called Justice for Lockie on here. It's, it's a little uh, boy down in Gore who was um, tragically passed away and, and drowned. Yeah. And uh, that's gone through a colonial inquest. So we are waiting the colonial result. Okay. So that's been pretty out of date um, yeah. as a supporter of the dad and stuff and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty, pretty special. And, and speaking of locations, um, as part of your tour tomorrow night, you're actually going to be at the Pump House Theatre. The Pump House is always really quite an interesting. There's an old man who stays there who's yeah. passed on. And every time I go, I've got, I've got to make sure I ask him because he's always up on the top right hand side up in the rafters type thing. If you're on the stage, you'll see him. And I always say, hey, mate, I'm just borrowing your house for a couple of hours. I'm not here to annoy you or send you back. 
Yep. He's like, oh, that's all right, young fella. You know, yeah. So I'll play as sweet as. Yeah. And if I don't say it, um, oh, shit goes wrong. You know, <laughs> goes pear shaped. Well, it's a great location. Like, it's, one of our, it's one of our ongoing research locations. We had sort of access to the place all the time. So cool. we spent a lot of time there. So. Uh, sort of, I'd be interested to hear of your experiences there and all that because we've had a few little moments there, little yeah. subtle moments that make us go, hmm, you know. But, um, and of course, we know about the various ghosts that are thought to be there. Well, I don't know. No. I've never been I won't told tell you. I won't tell you. No, <laughs> but the thing is, I know there's an old fella up on the top right and he's yeah. kind of like the keeper of the place and I acknowledge him every time I'm there. Yeah. Um, and like I said to you, if I don't, things go a bit pear shaped. Um, I'll give you one though, there is a mysterious guy at seat. Nine at the top back row, yeah. right in the centre centre chair. There's always a shadow person that's seen up there. So I'd like to know things. You know, we're trying to figure out more about See, him. For me, when I'm there, there's people in those seats. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we, so we do public events there, and we always say to people, just pick a seat, go sit wherever you want, whatever. Yeah, you know, every seat takes fancy, and we always watch to see if anyone is, yeah, levitates to that seat. Yeah, and uh, there's always sort of one that will come and sit, you know, oh, this is still sort of interesting. No, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. like this shadow person that's often seen there, and we thought, who is this person? You know, we'd love to find out a bit more, so. Yeah, I, I, I tend not to get into the historic, this is my personal thing, historical stuff of, of places like that, the, the history, because um, I just go there, I acknowledge the people that are there, that's their home, yeah. that's because if they've chosen that, that's fine. Uh, but I acknowledge that they're there, and then I just carry on with nothing. If I don't acknowledge it, well, oh, crazy stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. You know, they go, what are you doing here? Why are you talking to him? I'm going to keep cutting you off. You know, or in your case, uh, running out your batteries and stuff like that, and blowing out bulbs and you know, all sorts of fun things. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just an acknowledgement for me. I always acknowledge the people of the, of the afterlife, yeah. especially when I'm starting to work. It's about respect, isn't it? It's, it's about sort of respect, compassion, mm -hmm. so many things, you know, you just, but they were people too, so, yeah. you know. Oh, on, the, on that, um, in your beliefs, or in, from what you've experienced in your life, do you feel that they are deceased beings? Or could they be interdimensional, or could they be something else? Well, for me, my, my primary job is to um, bring peace and healing and calm to those that are left behind. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, and I won't go too far into this, but a lot of people don't get a chance to say goodbye. Uh, tragic accidents, there's no chance of saying goodbye. Or I didn't say I loved you that day, yeah. not knowing that they didn't come, weren't coming home. So there's that part. And it's dealing with what, we, what I call, and I'll use my words, the first, first line of defense or the first realm is the people we know. They're our loved ones. They're the people that we know through and through. And so they don't turn into monsters when they pass away. And if we're allowed to visit them, then the only thing that can make that happen is love for each other. And so that, for me, is a massive thing. You're discussing or heading into the genre of um, other dimensions and different things, and yeah, well, they all exist too. But for the basis of what I do is in that first phase. The other deeper stuff is out the gate and quite interesting. Um, oh, I'd love to tell you what I do in the States, man. It'll blow your mind, mate. But I'm not allowed. Unfortunately. Such a tease. Um, oh, I'm just not. I mean, I mean, you just have to think. I can't even tell you, yeah. tell you anything, actually. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but there's places in the States which I think you'll know. If I spoke to them, you'll just be like, you're what? So, been to some really amazing places but that's next level that's that's uh, pretty dark and you're working with cults and, and satanic ritual and our job is to try and locate these groups of people and shut it down okay. that's as far as I could go it's yeah. pretty out the gate mate and most New Zealanders won't grasp that concept but a belief in nothing is still a belief I believe in nothing so I still believe in nothing right I'm, I'm believing in something um, so there's a lot of people that believe in different things and they're entitled to do whatever they like. However, when they start hurting children and stuff like that, that becomes a big, big friggin' problem for us, for our unit. And uh, yeah, we track them. Yeah, the reason I asked you about the, the multi-dimensional, interdimensional um, aspect of it was because some of the investigations we've done, especially in private homes, um, 
we've had sessions happen before where there's interactions with the gadget, various gadgets and trigger objects and recording objects and stuff like this that we use with our experiments. Um, there was one, it was uh, in Titarangi, a house out in Titarangi. Um, the house was experiencing all sorts of activity, the family was all experiencing something. We went in there and we started interacting and we were using this, uh, using all sorts of various gadgets and we were getting knocking sounds, it was all through knocking. We started going through the alphabet mm -hmm. and getting, we got names and we ended up after about an hour and a half of communication, well we think it was communication, but it was very direct mm -hmm. really, uh, with a 10 year old boy called Jonathan Lockley. Yeah. And, uh, but we asked him, we said, you know, can you see us now? Can you see us where you are? And he said, yes, well, I can see you. And I said, are you in the room with us right now? And he said, no. Mm -hmm. So he was almost like on a different okay. I can plane. tell you where it was, yeah. if, you, if you like. Oh, I'm open to what I think. I'm open to anything. Well, the, the first part of this whole sequence is uh, the dream state. This is where we meet our people all the time. And it's literally at the end of your fingertips, but it's another dimension. Mm -hmm. So it's through the frequency and through the being able to control um, your status of mind and the dream state is the, is the key to it all. So when I was a child, I used to try and stay awake whilst I was asleep. And I wanted to figure out what happens when you go to sleep. So if, to figure it out, I had to stay awake in my sleep. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So when I come back, I can tell people what happens when you go to sleep. And so what I learned was is that there's a, a, a tech, I wouldn't say it's a technique, it's a, an ability to be fully alert whilst I'm asleep. But now I can stay and remain fully awake and conscious inside of my subconscious and do shows. Wow. Okay. That's how it works. Yeah. So I'm basically in the bit where you go from being awake and asleep on the bit, just as you start to dribble on the pillow, yeah. that like fluffy spot. Is that hypno Pompeo, hypno go gear? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of there. Yeah. Sometimes a little further yeah. and sometimes way in, yeah. but still conscious of what's going on. And so, uh, locating a missing person, we're going into their, their journey um, and going backwards in time, uh, which has been fascinating for me. And crime work, well, obviously, you. <laughs> Tracking, tracking people down, it's pretty insane, but it, 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 everything happens the way it's meant to in the moment. Mm. But for the awareness side of, of things is your little mate Jonathan is in that zone looking back at you. So he's not with you as such, but he can connect to you. Yeah, because you said there was other people there with him, but he yeah. didn't know who they were. It might Jonathan be just other people being nosy, because when you switch yeah. a light, when you, when you affirm something, or do an affirmation, um, a karakia, in anything that brings positivity into a situation, uh, they're all going to go, hey, what are they up to? Mm. And they all want to come and have a look. Yeah. It can be quite interesting. So. Yeah. And so the whole sensing murder thing, how did that come about then? Oh, um, were you just asked or did you... Did yeah, you I got asked. Position, I, I was the last person they had asked too, it's funny oh. enough. Um, and did a test run on the case and yeah. And the nearest history, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. It was interesting. I didn't watch the whole shebang oh. of it, but uh, I watched quite a few of them. And oh, it was really good. When Ninox, um, Ninox had them, had sensing it. The crew on Ninox, the staff yeah. on the TV coming were amazing. Um, Dave Baldock, Sim Smith, Matt Aiken, um, a few other people were amazing people who actually put the families first. It was incredible. They were incredible. And unfortunately, after that, uh, company went into whatever situation they went into and another company brought it, brought the rights. Just wasn't the same. Right. So that's why I, I, peel, I peeled out. It's like okay. your intention must be right, otherwise it will not work. So yeah. I just said no, I'll do it. Um, no disrespect to anybody, but no. that yeah. was my option. Yeah. Um, paranormal gadgets, are there any gadgets that you've used in the past that you think these are actually good, or this is rubbish, this is bullshit, this is... In the past, uh, I used to I, I used to like a pen, use a pendulum, yeah. um, but they're all just tools to help you to communicate with people that have passed on, that want to get their messages through. Um, to give you, a, 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 right now I, don't, I haven't been using those for years. Um, the bottom line is to explain it to you, Mark, it's kind of like, makes us feel secure when we can tangibly see something moving 
or, or the dial dialing or oh there is definitely something there because we all doubt ourselves and you know when you feel something you feel it mate you feel it and oh, yeah. you bloody know so it's a then you've got to decipher is it a positive or a negative and what's going on with it or who's who and what's happening and identifying what's happening so that you're safe is really important because there's a polarity you can't have one without the other one so have you actually come across anything quite negative in your past i suppose you would have wouldn't you yeah. something dark and yeah, what did I say before about what I do in the States? I mean, there's people that are just monsters, mate. Yeah. The animals. They're the worse than animals, actually. And, you know, um, yes, it does your head in to think that somebody could do cruel things to another human. Like that. Have you had anything physical happen to you, though? Oh, yeah. Spiritually wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. Yeah, pushed over, knocked yeah. over, scratched, kicked. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. name it. <laughs> but. Once I figured out how to stand in my power, they couldn't get to me anymore. Yeah. Good luck. What do you think the Tamuk was here for? Yeah. Just looking at those, I've got the, the tattoos there. You got, are they, do they have any specific meanings to you? Like, Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, they, they run, basically I had an experience over in the States that uh, almost came at a very high cost. And I, I've been wanting some, a Tamuk for ages and I came home and I was, I, I was just a wreck because of a really bad situation and we got caught up in it. Um, this came about and they were fully, basically, fully done with karakia and waita uh, all the way through without seeing them. So 16 hours this arm, 14 hours this arm, two days in a row consecutively. So there was no sketching or etching or tracing or nothing. Free hand, which was I pretty... Nothing. I got nothing. Pretty, pretty damn special, but this side's my entire life story, and this is my my defence. Yeah, as you can see, if I do that, my life comes up. There's a put away. There's, there's a, that's, that's the story. Yeah, it's special to me. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I'm looking forward to tonight. It's um, it's it's, yeah, it's really good. I have, I've never seen you live. I've seen you online, and I've watched interviews, and you always come across as um, being very down to earth. It's the, it's the whole Kiwi bloke attitude, which is very down to earth, and it's, yeah, I like that, that appeals to me. It's who I am as well. With, with my research, I'm very down to earth, and anybody that knows me knows that I'm just like that guy, you know, Kiwi bloke, you know, that's me. So I appreciate that. It's not pretentious, it's not deaverish. Not no. that I've seen, not that I've seen. I don't no, like you like behind the scenes, but not that I've seen. At the end of the I day, that. You, what you're saying is what you get. And I look at that, I'm not there to attack other people. I'm not there to go, look at me, I've never had anything. I'm not there to chase dollars. I'm not there to do anything other than to enjoy my life. Share what I know. I still can't take it with me. And what, I, what I've learned over the years is it's important to, to talk things out in order for people to understand that we shouldn't be afraid for death. We shouldn't. There's, there's absolutely incredible things going on over there, but only you and you alone will be able to decide what you choose to do when you get there. You know what I mean? So, you know why a dog's so damn happy all the time? Because it knows it's got a short life. We have short lives too. Realistically, it is relatively short on the bigger picture of things. So why the hell are we sitting around moping about, oh, this and that, oh, that, you know? Yeah. Just get off your ass and go and live a full life, mate. I actually find it frustrating that life is so short. I, I really do, because I mean, with my research, there are so many goals that I have set, and so many things I want to do, so many things I want to know, which is why I'm talking to everybody and, and yeah. traveling the world as much as I can to experience these things because I want, yeah, I just, I guess I'm hoping for that, uh, that ultimate moment. I'm still waiting for that full body, that version or that, you know, that interaction, you know, that's something that I've had little subtle moments of things that make me go, wow, yeah, that's really cool. And it keeps me going. That's what I've been doing all my life. Oh, look, there's always that. But I'm just waiting for that moment, you know, that. But an expectation will, will swallow that moment up and, and maybe you might not ever see it. Well, I've been told that by many people is that I'm expecting too much, yeah. too fast, and I should just live in the moment. Just throw it all yeah. in there, man. Yeah, I mean, I've stayed in some of the most haunted places around the world, and I just don't get the action. Yeah, the very next day, on either side of that night, there's just like full on action, you know. Just, like, see, this is a thing that I say to my people when I'm reading for them. An expectation puts a, a glad wrap film over it and stops it. I guess, yeah. A demand and a want versus a need. So for you, the, the, the desire to share some beautiful, um, and sometimes some places I guess you go to are really amazing historically. Some really positive stuff too, not all doom and blue. 
um, to bring in the essence that we shouldn't be afraid. And if we change our attitude, the whole thing will fall into place versus, why hasn't it happened to me? Come on, you guys, hurry up. Yeah. And patience is a big one. And um, sometimes you just got to sit there for half an hour and let it go. It's like, oh, well, whenever you're ready, I've turned up for you. Just if you want to show me that you're here, then you go ahead. Um, yeah. It's in their time, not your time. They're in control. Yeah. To exactly. a point, yeah. you must be in control of yourself uh, with your own stature. Yeah. And so by eliminating the expectation, we were in control of ourselves in a way. Exactly. I mean, I found most of the stuff we've experienced is just when we just sit around like this, just chatting, talking, just doing nothing. With no equipment set up and just being in the moment. And so um, that's when things start to happen. So. Yeah. See, like, your, your granddad's been bugging me since I sat down with you. Your dad's dad. Yeah. So he, he's been like, oh, okay, okay, so you're not looking at me. And he goes, oh, buddy, God, thanks. Oh, God, God. And, you know, that's chatting away. And, you know, it's kind of like, oh, I've got to prepare for a show. I've got 15, yeah. 20 minutes before I have to go on stage. Yeah. But, the, the reality of it is, is that, um, is your dad unwell or something that but I haven't actually seen my dad for a while, actually. We've got a very close family, so okay. I wouldn't know. Well, I wouldn't I didn't mean to. The old, the, the granddad's doing this, the father's, he says the father's like that, so that would indicate to me the old man's not a honey. I'm not here to read for you though, I'm just here to yeah. have a chat. But it's quite a nice that you're not alone because he's one of your biggest fans. When in this life you would have been skeptical, it's kind of grumpy old fun. I'm not being disrespectful. You know, great, it's you know, like, it's a cool dude, yeah. but, um, <laughs> <laughs> caught on camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, hey, just one last thing, who's the, who's the female that, that passed the cancer around here? Yeah, the pastor cancer? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I give you an example, mum's mum, for example, your mate, right? She's passed, right? Yeah, well, I'm adopted, but I, I recently, found, well, a few years back, I found my birth mum, um, and she died of bone cancer. Okay. Um, that was my birth mum. She lived in Canada. Your birth mother? mother. My birth, birth mother. Your birth mother or your birth mother's mother? My birth mother. Oh, your birth mother. Yeah, okay. Well, I recently done the whole DNA test right. thing and I've done so that. So, she's passed away of bone cancer. Yeah. So, he's, okay. so she, maybe she just knocked that book off. Maybe. Maybe there's reasons why you, you know why you were not with her, mate. Maybe. Maybe. I don't really know too much about the parents, that's the thing, yeah, yeah. being adopted, you don't really sort of know. I've only just, I've only just found my birth father. Oh Actually, wow. He's uh, over, in, over in the UK. Yeah. So I've been over and seen him now, which is really, which is oh, really cool. The UK's interesting, eh? Oh, oh. You want to try to walk through Rome, mate? Spiritually. Or, uh, like for me, headphones. Well, back in the day, it was a walkman. So, yeah. you know, who says things too? Yeah. Um, Interesting. Well, the lady that passed the cancer, that's just knocked the book off the thing here. She wants to let you know that she said she does love you. It was a situation that had nothing to do with whether she wanted you or not. Yeah. It was a situation that was pretty dire for her. And much, yeah. you'll find out as it comes to hand that she wanted me to let you know that she's sorry that she was not having to do that, but she had no choice. Yeah. It's very complex and complicated. Her situation, her background might have been really tough, i.e. Uh, demanding family come from the background of you can't be with that person and there's no way that's bloody happening no 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 and this brings shame to everybody rah, 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 rah. it was really kind of intense it's more so coming from her side not his side not that side it's yeah. more so the pressure from her family and so she you know she wanted me to make sure you know that she just oh. said that quickly yeah, yeah. no I, I only got to speak to her briefly once uh, on the phone it was, was pre-internet and uh, yeah I, think, I appreciate that. Thank cool. you so much. That's really cool. cool.